Let's say you have a dream. You have a dream of owning your own business, leaving your corporate job and starting a new life that you believe that's more fulfilling and meaningful for you. So you start telling everyone in your corner, right? Your family, your friends, your colleagues, maybe even, right? And you start to hear these things like, are you serious? That's not responsible. Or are you just having a midlife crisis too early? That was the one I got a lot when I quit my job and started telling everyone that this is what I wanted to do. Now, it is kind of irritating and frustrating when the people closest to us who are supposed to be our biggest allies for our dreams are also, you know, our biggest dream crushers. And that can be hard to swallow, especially during a moment of transition where you need inspiration, you need help and support and motivation to, to do the thing that scares you, but you know you really want to do. So in this video, I want to talk a little bit about how to handle dream crushers in your life when they are the people you love the most and probably people that mean well, but having these complicated, tricky, sticky conversations may not be easy. So I want to walk you through a couple ways to decipher, right? Who are your allies, why they may not be uh, your family and friends, and how to handle some of these negative criticisms that can happen as you pursue your big dreams. When I quit my job over 10 years ago, um, I was quitting my job during a, a bit of a recession, which was really interesting in terms of conversations I got to have with family and friends about the thing I was wanting to do, you know, and giving up a six figure job, giving up my insurance, giving up a sure thing right in my career. A lot of people came to me and really tried to talk me out of these dreams because they thought, man, this is the worst time to be doing something like that. And also they were thinking a lot about what was happening in the economy and what was happening in their lives as well. Now, it certainly wasn't something I needed to hear at that time because I was already in that stage of like freaking out <laughs> and needing more support, needing people to believe in my dream so that I would feel the courage and build that courage in order to take that leap. Um, and what I really found out after you know, looking back and looking back at those conversations is that, you know, these dream crushers don't mean to be negative. I think people, when you tell people your dreams, um, people can tend to project their own fears about your situation when they start to look at their own situation, right? Like, so I would get people saying things like, oh, it's really normal to hate your job. It's really normal to not like it all the time. It's really normal to feel like after a vacation, you're depressed and going back to work is supposed to kind of feel like that on a Sunday night before a Monday morning, right? And so people try to normalize the situation, especially if they're not in the state that you're in where you're looking for something different or you're willing to take that risk to find something bigger in your life to pursue, they will tend to tell you the risks of making that choice because in a way uh, you're a mirror for them as well. They're they're talking to themselves, convincing themselves that they should also stay where they need to be staying so that they don't take the bigger risk that you're willing to take, right? So really know that it it isn't a, a direct um what's the word? like direct like um offense to you you know it's not personal i think when we share these dreams to sometimes the wrong people that are not in the same um stage of life or the same desires or values that we have um we can get a lot of other people's biases right their own narratives about what is possible right and it, they're really just talking out their own narrative and values right and it's up to you to want to believe those things or not right but making that choice of talking to the right people is a really good start to not end up in a conversation you don't really want to have right so when you are looking for people that aren't going to be dream crushers, it may not be people that are in your current inner circle at the moment, right? And that's really natural because I think when you have um, you, you have dreams for a different life, you know, people that you grew up with, people that you know as family and friends may not always be the right allies that are also going towards the right direction. It may mean for you to curate a new community, a new group of counsel, right, of people that share these same beliefs as you, that don't think think you are ridiculous for wanting these dreams, and they don't they won't talk you out of it. If anything, they'll talk you into it because they too are really excited about the things that you're excited about. It's exactly what I had to do as well to curate um, you know, new business friends, you know, new peers that I can look up to that are 
designing a life and a type of business that I wanted to design and learning from those people and being around those people really helped me to be brave, right? Because I can just see the, the, the path that they're taking. They're talking to me all the time about decisions they're making, what intentional choices they're making in their lives. And it gives me that courage to know that, hey, I'm no different from them. And I too can have this dream. And so the the people you surround yourself with during that inaugural conception of your new life, new ideas for business, whatever it is that is off the beaten track of what's traditional life, um, it's really important to surround yourself with people that believe in your dreams, that don't think you are you know, going crazy, right, for wanting this as well, right? That's going to really help you with that inspiration and motivation that's so essential in the beginning of taking a leap of faith like that. So seek the right support. Go out there and meet up with people, join groups, be part of a mentorship community, go and find coaches, mentors, people that you can be around and have feedback for the life that you want so that it normalizes this thing that you truly want in your life. Now, if you do get caught in a conversation with, you know, family, parents, whoever it is that kind of ask you about what's going on with your life and you feel the need that you want to tell them uh, what might be going on, you may not need to share every single thing. I know that one of the things that I learned is that when I'm feeling a little shaky in my decision, not that I don't want to have that thing, but like, oh God, um, I'm feeling imposter syndrome. I'm feeling like, can I make it? Is this for me? You know, you're still in that contemplation mode of like, okay, I'm easing myself into courage to do this thing. Um, it's, it's, when you start to share every single thing about your own insecurity sometimes around that dream, it will prompt someone to go, oh my God, yeah, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't, don't take that risk. Right. And then it's going to kind of keep you stuck to where you are instead of where you need to be need to go and who you need to become to have those dreams, right? So having some boundaries about what you share during the inaugural part of your dream is so important because you don't need to share every single thing. You can just share an intent. You know, it could sound like something like, hey, I'm thinking about, you know, like using my gifts and starting a business on my own to create more lifestyle freedom. That's just a dream I have. I think everyone wants more flexibility and autonomy. It's something I'm working towards. And it can just kind of sound big picture like that versus like, you know, I've been trying to do this thing and, you know, it's not working out for me. Uh, I'm not quite sure about this. I'm scared about that. You don't have to share those things with people because unfortunately, the people that care about us the most, like our parents, our friends and family, they just want to keep us safe. <laughs> so keeping us safe is help, is making sure we don't do the thing that scares us, which is not what we need right? To go and pursue our dreams, right? So boundaries about how you communicate, what you communicate on, not sharing every single piece of your dream to protect your dream, I think is a really important step. Um, and then accepting different perspectives. So if you do have someone that is a bit of a naysayer, they're like, oh, my uncle did this and he didn't succeed. And, you know, this is really hard. Know that that's just one reality. That's just one story out of many, many stories, right, out there in the world. And if that's not the right person to talk about, <laughs> talk to about your dream, then you may want to limit that communication to that particular person, right? Um, and also accepting that everybody has an opinion and you can decide what opinions and narratives narratives best suit who you want to be for the dream, for your dream to be realized, right? So that's going to help you to stay resilient, right, to those different changes, those different ups and downs that can happen when pursuing a big goal and, and being around people that can support you because they've gone through the similar pathway. They've gone through the trenches that you're about to get into. That is way better feedback and way better advice than someone who hasn't done it before and has tons of opinions to give you, right? But if you, it, when you're talking to, to, to these people who are naysayers, I think it's really important sometimes to also teach them how you want to be supported. You know, like that was something I had to do with my mother who is Malaysian, Asian, right? Where their language of love for Chinese moms are warning you about the worst case scenarios that can ever happen to you because that's the way they keep you safe. That's the way of them showing I love you, right? And I didn't notice that when I used to get, you know, these kind of pushbacks from my mother. And she used to say, well, I'm only telling you this because I love you, obviously. Um, and then I started to realize, oh, okay. So her intent is to love me. Her intent to say these warning signs about all these horrible things that can happen to me are part of a language of love that we may not see eye to eye, but her intent is pure. Her intent was for good. So it's up to me to teach her how I want to be loved. 
how I need to get that support. So part of that is acknowledging right to my mother that thank you for caring for me thank you for taking the time to warn me about all these things but what is going to be more helpful to me right now because i am feeling a little uncertain and i really want to do this thing is i would really appreciate more positive affirmations more things that can help me do this thing in a better way right just support me by giving me a hug just support me by saying i believe in you you don't even need to give me a solution but just having you you know, like that you can support me and cheer me on. That means a lot to me right now. Can you do this for me? Right? Ask her if she can do this for me. And when she understood that, I think she was so much more conscious about what to say, how to say it, because I have educated her, right, on what was going to really work for me to get support. And sometimes I think we need to vocalize this, to vocalize how we need that support so that people around us can can rally right uh, around us and and make sure they give us the support we need if they choose to do so and if they don't then you know where else to look for that support and finally to keep your spirits up and stay resilient during times of change and you know lots of sort of naysayers that can be around you right when you share these things is just really celebrate small wins and and vocalize them often. So if you, you know, it doesn't have to, you don't have to wait till like a successful business or getting your first client to celebrate. You can celebrate just things of like clarity, like the clarity that you have around the life you want, right? Or the fact that you read an article or watched a YouTube video or read a book that really jolted something in your heart and inspired you to do something different. Sharing those little things allows you to kind of plant the seed in your own brain that you are advancing towards you know, things that are helpful, things that are beneficial instead of waiting for these big goals to happen. And when you share these tiny little wins, these tiny little, you know, epiphanies that you have with your life of what makes you happy, what makes you feel fulfilled, what excites you about your life that you want to pursue, no one can really dump on that dream because that's how you feel, <laughs> right? And so that the, the, the tiny wins, I think, are so important to keep yourself motivated, but also remember and acknowledge that there's a reason why you're doing all this, you know? There's a reason why you're going through some of the ups and downs and the tough times to get to the truth, to get to a better life that you wish to lead. Um, and there's like, you know, there's a real motivation and a fire in your belly to do this. Uh, and sometimes we do need that pep talk. You know, we do need that that constant reminder of what is all for that purpose behind our actions so that when the going gets tough, we can rem remind it of our purpose and our why around this this potential intention for ourselves. OK, so um, I would love to hear from you. You know, how have you been dealing with, you know, naysayers or dream crushers in your life? Have you also found a different way to navigate some of these conversations? Um, have you found that you may have to kind of like clean up shop a little bit and curate a new community for yourself? And what's been helpful for you to, you know, gain that support, gain that um, like feedback that is crucial and beneficial for your success and where have you found these people um and yeah just anything that's really been helpful in your journey in your transition in your career in your transition to live a different life have the business of your dreams um i want to hear it all let me know in the comments and i'd love to hear your story thank you for joining me on mine today and um, learning with me on this video and i'll see you in the next one have a good day